So after day five of the drawn second test in Barbados, this is Ask George. Elliot Rowland asks, thoughts on picking two spinners for the third test? Well, it depends on the pitch, doesn't it? Um, ultimately, you probably would have wanted another one here. You would. I, I'm not sure the pitch will be the same, and my suspicion is they won't play Matt Parkinson in Grenada, but we'll see. Would Matt Parkinson have been a, a, a good option for all the good that Dan Lawrence did? It would have been nice to have a... Uh, a second yeah, front yeah. line spinner. It would. I mean, it, it would have been good to have him, and uh, it, it definitely in the fourth innings. I suppose you could argue about how useful he'd have been in the second innings. But I mean, if you're taking him around this much, uh, you might as well have a look at him. Uh, it doesn't feel as if they much fancy him, which makes me wonder why they keep picking him in the squad. But I might be wrong. It's just just uh, a sense that I have. Um, yeah, let's see. I'll be pleasantly surprised if he uh, plays in Grenada. Dave Studland asks, two tests down, have we learned anything about this England side? I think so. Yeah, we do, actually. Um, uh, I think they are difficult circumstances. Um, and I think they are showing good energy. I think in a funny way, they are playing as if they're worth more than the sum of their parts. But the sum of their parts might not be add up to as much as it did previously. Does that make sense? Um, they look very united. There is excellent energy. I know these things, these terms might sound a bit woolly, but I think they do matter. There was a selflessness in the batting, a commitment in the field. I think those things are really good. The problem is they're not a brilliant team. You know, they're, they're, they don't have the raw materials in some of those players. That That, that is a, an attack which... You know, it's not the most potent bomb in attack in the world, is it, very clearly. Uh, and the ceiling on one or two of those players, I suspect, isn't massively high. I thought Sakim has been promising. I think Dan Lawrence has been promising. I think Leach has improved. Yeah, I, I think, um, actually, I feel uh, a little bit encouraged by what I've seen with these two tests. I know the results aren't there, but they're not working with great raw materials in terms of the pitches either. Simon Stokes asks, what are the chances of the pitch for the third test being exactly the same? Um, well, I, I mean, I don't know, because I don't think this was meant to happen. I, I, you know, I don't think this is what Cricket West Indies are asking. And I do think Grenada have invested pretty heavily in cricket tourism. And actually, they want people to come to the island to enjoy it, mm. not come to the island, sit there for five days, spend your money, but actually go away thinking... Mm. Because I, I, I'm absolutely sure Barbados have made a mistake here. Um, have, having spoken to, to lots of people about it, I, I, you know, the, 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 the money that the tourists spend is not it's not limitless. And there are lots of lovely places to go and watch cricket where England, you know, go and play. You might want to go to Gaul or Wellington or Cape Town or all these other beautiful places in the world. There are dozens of them. And... Um, yeah, I think, I think it was mistakes to this extremely expensive country that's wonderful in many ways. It's probably my favourite place we get to go, to be honest. But, um, I, 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 you know, I think I've said before, I think that's an exploitative surface. So I think that Grenada will be a bit better, but we've got a very limited sample size. I mean, I think, I personally have done one test there, but, uh, which is quite high scoring, but there was a bit more pace in it. Uh, certainly the bad. Uh, and the last time we went there in 2019 on the White Ball Tour, it was full of runs. I think Chris Gale got 160 or something, and Joss Butler. Joss Butler and Chris Gale hit the ball absolutely miles. Mm. Uh, and it was fun because there was carry and pace bounce. Um, obviously, there, there were runs there too. I, I, I'm expecting it to, to have a lot more pace, a bit more pace, certainly. Um, so, uh, you, you know, but we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to wait till we get there. I don't get there till tomorrow. Andy Cleave asks, um, how, how proud and in awe would Jeff Boycott have been of Craig Brathwaite's efforts in this test? And actually, well, he would, but, but wouldn't anybody? I mean, it was an incredible effort, you know? It was, uh, he, he was incredibly stubborn and disciplined, and he, you know, he was full of admiration. And also, he, he, you know, just speaking to him there at the end, he didn't even look that tired. He was, you know, not sweating or anything. <laughs> just, 
just batted and batted and batted, stuck within his um, game plan, which is quite limited, but also quite sensible. You know, he keeps his hands very close, doesn't he? He doesn't reach for it. Very few rushes of blood. Um, and he played the spin very well. Uh, I think uh, Jeffrey Booker, I think any batter would, would admire, any, anyone who loves cricket would admire what he did. It wasn't the most exhilarating innings of the game, but it was incredibly valuable. And I'm glad he won the player of the match. I thought he deserved it. Based on sweat, who who is the, the sweatiest batsman around? In this game? Mm. Probably Stokes. <laughs> but I don't know. I didn't, you know, go and measure it. I've never Prince asked Andrew that question. Um, who, who would be the... I don't know. Um, I'm sure the England guys probably sweated more. It was quite hot when they batted too. Uh, there, to be fair, there was a lovely breeze over the ground today. Uh, PL asks, will England have won this test with Graham Swan in the 11? So I, I saw that question. That's a really good question. I mean, obviously, I don't know the answer. But he, he yeah, he, he's, Graham Swan is the most irreplaceable member of that fantastic team that England had in 2010 to 12, whatever it was. Hmm. Uh, and he would have threatened both edges in a way that Jack Leach doesn't really. So, you know, he's a better bowler. I'm not, not having to go to Jack Leach. I think Jack Leach has done tremendously, but yeah, they might. They, they might. He, you know, he, he contributed with the bat as well. He's very good at the slips. England miss Grand Swan. Of course they do. He's a, he's a great England spin bowler. Uh, I think he's probably the best of my lifetime. So, uh, they might have done. Yeah, but, 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 you know, do remember, he had bad days too. I mean, I think... Actually, I think he ended up with a five for here in 2009. But have a look at his figures. I reckon he took something like five for 165. It, it, I, I mean, that's off the top of my head. In 2009 here, when it was a draw, and something like 18, 20 wickets fell in the match. So, you know, let's not just presume that players of other eras would have definitely been better. They all came up on pitches which were basically made of feathers and negated all their skills. But, you know, Swan was a bit different. And, yeah, he's the sort of player who might have made a difference. Tom Vickers asks, um, you know, flat pitch is an understatement, but how does the way that Dan Lawrence bats show that there's real potential there? I think it has. I think it really has. I think he's uh, grown with every performance. And it's not just with the bat. He's been good in the field. He's contributed with the ball. And he's not just scoring some runs. He's batting really selflessly. You know, he's up the tempo when they required him to do that. There'll obviously be different, tougher tests to come. You know, he's got to be tested on a bouncy wicket. He's got to be tested with pace. Uh, he's got to, his defence will have to be tested at some stage. But, you know, all you could ask him to do is what he's doing. And I think that is one of the pluses of the tour so far for England. It's, you know, maybe a slightly controversial uh, decision to put him at four. Maybe Oli Pope thought he about four. Um, uh, and I think he's pretty much taken his chance. Uh, you know, he's certainly taken steps in the right direction. Uh, he's not the finished article by any means, but he has contributed with the ball as well, hasn't he? And he looks as if he's, um, he looks as if he's a, 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 a part of the group now, a part of the team. He's looking comfortable in the environment. I think that can only bode, bode well. So yeah, Dan Lawrence at this stage has been one of the successes of the tour, I think. Just before we sign off, George, I think our uh... Uh, viewers would probably be quite interested to know what you think of the what the eleven for the for the third test might might look like. Um, Craig Overton, Ollie Robinson, don't know if they're going to be available. How are you how are you are you viewing that? Um, well, I, I don't think the top seven will be very different, uh, but I think there's a, a good chance that uh, Ollie Robinson will return. Obviously, got to look at the wicket. Uh, Chris Wokes was really tired. Mm. Um, but, you know, if the wicket had a bit of grass in it, they'd probably want to play him again. But, yeah, Robertson and Overton could easily come in for Fisher and Wokes. And there is that possibility. If the pitch looks like that again, you know, maybe Parkinson will play. But um, um, I think it will have to be a pretty obvious turn for that to happen. I think I think they, the last time they played two spinners in the side outside Asia was here, wasn't it? I think uh, Adam Rashid played his last first-class game here, even. Um, so it's not something they do terribly often. Uh, and, 
you know, they, they really do take pride in bowling dry. And, you know, you put a, a young leggy in and, and ask him to bowl dry, that's, that's a lot to ask, isn't it? So, um, but then you you ask, you know, why is he, why is he traveling around with a squad? Is he just there in case Leach is ill or injured? I guess he is. Mm. Uh, but, but you know, I, I would I would expect a couple of changes uh, and I wouldn't be at all surprised. I mean, Fisher has not done anything to deserve getting dropped, but, but I wouldn't be surprised if Everton came back in because they might want to bat him at eight if Wokes doesn't play. So then, uh, and, and I'm pretty confident Robinson will play. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, that yeah, that will pretty much be it. I think Saki keeps his place, obviously subject to fitness and stuff and how they pull up in the next couple of days.